Hi, I'm Dr. Sharon Kazaza, and you're about to view a short video about your new baby from the doctors here at Washingtonville Pediatrics. Now let's listen to some baby care advice from our friends at Simply Parenting. There's so much to remember when caring for a newborn, and one of the most important rules is this. Keep it simple. Don't overload on baby products. Find a routine that works for you and stick with it. You can bathe your newborn once a day, but do it less if your baby has very dry skin. Use unscented soap and a gentle baby shampoo. When washing the baby's face, you generally only need to use warm water, but you can use a gentle soap if your baby has neonatal acne. Just be sure to rinse well. When shampooing, don't be afraid to wash the soft spot. It's actually a very tough membrane. Moisturize after bath time with a non-irritating cream or lotion. Your newborn will love this daily massage. The umbilical cord will normally fall off when the baby is between one and four weeks old. You can help facilitate this process by keeping the cord dry. Give sponge baths so you can control where the water goes, and fold the diaper down below the level of the cord. Change your baby whenever the diaper is dirty, and wipe the baby clean using either a wet washcloth or an unscented alcohol-free baby wipe. Moisturize the diaper area with A&D ointment or Vaseline, and use Desitin or Balmex if you see a rash developing. Never use talcum powder on a baby. It contains ingredients that can lead to yeast infections, and it can cause serious lung problems if inhaled by the baby. In fact, you don't need any powder at all if you're using disposable diapers. In general, the rule for anything that goes on a newborn's skin is to look for products that are gentle and unscented. When in doubt, do without, or get recommendations from your doctor. For bottle-fed babies, formula should always be iron-fortified since all babies need iron for normal brain development. If you are concerned about cow's milk allergy, please discuss this with the pediatrician before you change the formula. For breastfed babies, polyvisol infant drops will be the only vitamins that your baby needs at this time. Breastfed babies initially have many stools a day and they're typically yellow and seedy. Formula-fed infants should have at least one soft, mushy stool a day, but can have four or five. Color can vary from mustard to dark green. And remember, infants often grunt or strain when they stool. This is normal as long as the stools are soft. Babies typically have several wet diapers in a day. Newborn stools and wet diapers are a good sign that the baby's getting enough milk. If you're concerned that your baby is not urinating enough, or if you have questions about the baby's stools, you need to call our office. In the first few weeks of life, newborns often confuse day and night. Try feeding your infant quietly in a darkened room at night to help this transition. And remember to get your rest too when the baby naps. To create a safe sleep environment for your new baby, here are the recommendations from both the Academy of Pediatrics and the First Candle SIDS Alliance. Always place your baby to sleep on his or her back at nighttime and nap time. Use a firm, tight-fitting mattress in a safety-approved crib. The mattress should be covered only with a sheet. Remove all loose bedding soft fluffy pillows, blankets, quilts, comforters, soft or pillow-like bumpers, wedges, sheepskin, stuffed toys, and other soft products. Consider a wearable blanket instead of loose blankets. 
Never place an infant on soft surfaces, quilt, blanket, sofa, waterbed, pillow, soft mattress, or a bean bag. Be careful not to overheat your baby with excessive clothing or bedding, and keep the room at a comfortable temperature, but not overheated, 65 to 71 degrees. People have germs, and newborns have a hard time fighting infection, so it's best to avoid public places such as supermarkets, malls, places of worship for the first eight weeks. And although a newborn is a people magnet, visitors, especially adults who are sick and any children other than siblings should be kept to a minimum. And remember that everyone needs to wash their hands first, including mom and dad, before picking up the baby. Hiccups, sneezes, and even some noisy breathing can all be normal in a newborn. But if you suspect your baby is having any difficulty breathing or making deep chest wall movements during a breath, it's time to call our office. Hi, my name is Debbie and I'm one of the nurses here at Washingtonville Pediatrics. Here are some other reasons to call our office. If your baby has a fever rectally with a temperature of 100.5 or greater. If your baby is refusing to feed. Or if your baby is unusually fussy or irritable. If your baby is vomiting with more force than just spitting up. Or any time you are worried about your new baby. Now let's review some important safety tips. Follow these tips to keep your baby safe and sound. To reduce the risk of sudden infant death syndrome, all babies should be placed on their backs for sleep. To prevent falls, make sure your baby is strapped securely into all infant seats. The safest place for these seats is on the floor. In addition, never leave a baby unattended on a changing table, even if you've never seen your baby roll over. All babies must ride in a car seat, and that seat should face the rear of the car until your child weighs 20 pounds and is 12 months old. To prevent injury from airbags, car seats should always be placed in the back seat. Bottom line, be strict about safety. Your baby depends on you. If you're breastfeeding your new baby, please watch our special video on breastfeeding techniques, positioning, and common questions. Thank you.